Well, good afternoon, everybody. Rich Maverick is here coming to you live from the Discover Video Studio here in Wallingford, Connecticut. Now, we've got a lot of people tuned in right now. And if you look down below, you'll see that you can ask a question at any time. Just type in your name, ask a question. We'll collect the questions and we'll answer those questions at the end. Thank you for joining us today. This is going to be uh, hopefully interesting. You'll be the judge. Um, live webinar. We're going to talk about corporate communications. Uh, corporate town hall meetings. How do corporations use video, live and on-demand uh, streaming video, particularly uh, a Devo sort of system that Discover Video offers um, you know, in the enterprise? So let's get started first a little bit about Discover Video. So Discover Video was founded in 2008. We've been doing this for a long time. In fact, our previous company, Vbrick Systems, we founded back in 1997. So we've been doing this for a very, very long time. And through the years, we've gotten a lot of accolades for Discover Video. We recently have been awarded uh, something from Inc. Magazine. We're one of the fastest growing companies in the country, one of the 500 fastest growing companies in the country. You'll also find us in Streaming Media Magazine. And we are a veteran-owned business, so support your veterans. That's always good. So enough about Discover Video. Let's talk a little bit about what it is that um, corporations do with video. And one way to understand that is to take a look at some of the examples, some of the corporate examples I show you here. Um, so our customers range from uh, General Electric, who use us for training, uh, for uh, live streaming of that training, as well as video on demand. Aspen Dental, with uh, locations around the country. Uh, I won't read them all to you. But a lot of very large corporations who have very specific problems that are unique to the corporate environment that you don't find in educational environments or on the general internet web streaming. So let's discuss some of those and some of the applications that people, uh, you know, problems that people seek to solve. So let's talk a little bit about multimedia content for employees. So this includes things like the CEO live webcast, you know, the town hall meeting. So periodically, once a day if you like, once a week, once a month, usually once a quarter. The uh, management of the company likes to get everybody together and uh, align all the employees to a common goal. You know, one of the problems you always have is um, the rumor mill, right? So if you, uh, if you hear a story, secondhand, thirdhand, you know, that often gets a little bit confused. So it's better if you can hear it directly from the horse's mouth or the CEO's mouth in this particular case. Another great example, like I mentioned GE and so many others, just-in-time training, uh, the live video, but also video on demand, recording subject matter experts and saving that their expertise that can be easily shared with others. Uh, Instructor-led uh, uh, in, uh, videos, uh, which we're going to show you, that are pretty easy to create. And of course, for external marketing announcements and so on, nothing communicates better than sight and sound. So what are some of the requirements for an executive broadcast? Well, I've listed some of them here. So you certainly want to do live video. There's something very compelling about live video. You don't have to do live, but there's something compelling about it. Um, along with dynamic PowerPoint. So that's what I'm doing here. I have PowerPoint running here on my computer and uh, you're watching it uh, out of our studio here and we've got chroma key so we can put the image behind us and make the whole presentation a little bit more appealing. Importantly, this presentation can be viewed on virtually any device, iPhone, iPad, Android, desktop, Safari, Firefox, IE, Chrome, you, know, you name it, you can view the live and on-demand video immediately. And it can be delivered in a very secure fashion and even measured so you know who's viewing what. So you get all the uh, viewing statistics as well as the ability to ask questions live uh, as the presentation unfolds. Importantly, every department could produce their own webcast or create their own content and manage it independently. Also built into systems like this is digital signage. Now you might think that, well, isn't that a different system? Well, if you think about it for a moment, Digital signage nowadays is delivering live TV, you know, CNN in the lobby, mixed with employee messages, um, slides, you know, and so graphics. And that all is hosted on the same system, and the same content can be pushed out to all the digital signage displays. 
In, in our particular case, that signage can be displayed on web browsers. We have a little device called SignStick, you know, terrific device for uh, simply plugging into a, uh, a monitor and it gets that content over the network. It includes RSS feeds, nudes, and, 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 and so on. And importantly, in our case, there's no additional cost. It's built in, unlimited, have as many signs as you like. By the way, the signage can also be played on uh, smart TVs without a player, on uh, Roku devices, and um, like I mentioned, even, uh, even in web browsers. So simple, template-driven, very easy to use. Some of the benefits that you have from um, corporate communications using streaming video. Well, I think there's a sense of community that uh, is formed when everybody is participating in an event at the same time. You know, gone are the days when you can uh, bring all your employees down into the cafeteria, perhaps, if you're a large corporation. People like to multitask as well. But equally importantly, they like to be able to uh, get their messages at, at their pace, at their time, so the recording of that becomes very, very important. You have a true employee involvement. They really feel part of the uh, part of the process. It's important enough that you're delivering these messages um, live, but also all the training material, making it easy for them to uh, to learn their jobs and improve their uh, their their uh, you know their work knowledge. Um, obviously, audio and video is impactful. That's what we're doing today. Um, I could be even more impactful. Let me show you what it looks like if I put the PowerPoint behind me and here's me full screen. All right, there you go. So there's a pretty impactful announcement. You want to look at a, at a, at a CEO, right? I can uh, gesture around and um, you know, create some, some pretty compelling video. You also, of course, can deliver live TV. And TV distribution is an integral part of our system. And... Um, should be part of any uh, enterprise distribution system. Now, you might not think, well, why would I want my employees to watch TV? Well, you think about it for a moment. You know, gone are the days of stringing coax cable around. You're right, you would certainly do that via, uh, by, via your network as long as the system has good network citizenship. But in many industries, insurance, um, you know, various law enforcement agencies, um, um, talk about the snow, snow plow people, you know, they all need immediate access to news and information. So having a small player on every desktop to be able to watch, you know, cable news or local news can be very, very compelling. And of course, the executives might want to have ESPN or something else distributed to their desktops, and you can control who gets to see what. So also, you have your BYOB, right, BYOD, I should say, strategy, where you'll want to uh, enable people to view that on their cell phones, their mobile devices, tablets, you know, uh, do it everywhere. Now, you look at uh, what we're doing today, say, Rich, that's, that's pretty good, right? Quality is pretty good. We're not breaking the bank here with, uh, with, with bandwidth. We're not doing an intergalactic, you know, 40-foot screen video here. We could, but that's not what we're doing. You know, this is appropriate for a corporate environment delivering an appropriate message with a quality that is um, certainly sufficient for the intended purpose, right? I could turn the quality crank up, but I have it set to sort of medium. And the cost to do that can range. So you can do what we're doing today using merely Streamsy, uh, $500 software. You can run it on your computer. It'll do all the things we're doing right now. In fact, all of this video is produced with a $500 Streamsy streaming to a, uh, to a Devos account. At the other end of the range, you have a studio. You can have a $50,000, $100,000 TV studio with uh, you know, very expensive cameras and monster tripods, and you can do that. Most people uh, lie somewhere in between. Again, you, every employee could use Streamsy and record and stream their own stuff right from the desktop, or you could have a studio like we have which maybe cost under $5,000, including a camera, a computer, lighting, microphones, all the accoutrements that you need. And happily, we sell through our partners. So our systems integrators can certainly outfit you with cameras and microphones and, and other equipment that you might need to have a professional result. But you don't have to break the bank to do this sort of stuff. So how do we stream? Well, this is what we're doing right now. We have Streamsy. And Streamsy, you can see it right here, can take in one or two video sources. I have one camera connected right now. I could have two, and we could switch back and forth between them, or multiple cameras. 
And um, I have my PC connected, so you're seeing the desktop, and we're integrating that into our presentation. That is then streamed directly to a streaming server, our distribution network, and then you're viewing it live. We're also recording this at the same time, and if you're not watching the live broadcast, you're watching our archive, you're watching the, the recording. Now, when I do that, you have one video, and one video is just great because it's portable. You can even podcast it, video podcast it, um, but you can't adjust it. So you have another choice in the Discover Video system, which is multiple streams. So we could take one, two, three, four different live streams and integrate them into a unified player. And now the viewer can decide which picture they want to be large or small, move it around on their desktop, and the user can customize the experience for themselves. Now that might be great for a presentation where you have maybe two videos, but what about things like assessment, you know, uh, employee or clinical assessment skills, or various security and monitoring applications where I want to have four cameras and I want to look at north, south, east, and west, see what's going on, and if I see something, be able to expand that screen. In fact, let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to close PowerPoint here for a moment. Let me bring up um, an example here. Here I'm looking at a recording that we did, oh, I think a month ago or so, talking about uh, the Devos software product. And um, I recorded it with two streams. And you can view this. Send us, a, send us an email. We'll send you a link to it if you want. So I can just play that. And this was recorded live, and this is the archive. And what's cool about this is I can move these players around to my heart's content. Maybe I want to see the video large. Maybe I want to see the video small, and I want the, uh, the image to be larger, so I can move that around right, and adjust it however I wish. And it stays in synchronization as I navigate through that player. So terrific for a lecture capture, for example. And it's also great for the CEO live broadcast. So there's an example of a dual stream uh, uh, presentation capture. Let's take a look at Streamzy. There's Streamzy. So we have Streamzy here on my desktop. I'm not going to give you a tutorial, but I want to show you how simple this is to use. It's, it's, it's very simple. There's a button for streaming. There's a button for recording. Press one, press the other, press both. So that's how you stream and record. What about your, uh, your um, production value? Well, it's pretty simple. I can move a picture in picture however I want it. And what I see here is here's the picture of me from my little camera right here. That's just a little webcam. There's a rear camera on my computer here, and we can see that over there. So there's Mike helping us out. <laughs> right? So that's how Streamsy works. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. I think we're done with that. Cool. Single stream, multiple streams, your choice. And again, pretty easy. Well, the other choice is what if I didn't want to do a video with two uh, with video or with two videos or with a picture in picture? No problem. We also support your more conventional or traditional PowerPoint. In this case, you upload a PowerPoint, the server automatically converts it, and then you just pick the slide that you want and your video is presented right alongside it. And that also offers you the ability to do chat, private questions, sort of like we're doing here. Um, you can also, very importantly, later change one of the slides in the middle of a presentation. How many times have you given a presentation and then uh, somebody tells you afterward, you know, slide number seven, you have a misspelling. Oh, well, with the presentation system, you can just replace that slide, even adjust the timings. So that's built into the system as well, as well as the ability to poll the audience in real time. So a few tips for a successful corporate town hall meeting. First of all, create an agenda. You can use your PowerPoint presentation as a guide, but it's good to plan exactly what you're going to say, what you're going to do. Thank your, uh, your attendees in advance. Thank you for attending you know, our webinar. And then, uh, of course, at the end, explain the purpose so people know, uh, you know why they're here. Always a good idea to create a link for the video on demand so people know where to go to watch that video afterward, as well as the live stream in advance. Now, in the Devo system, that's automatic. They can just go to a login, go to a channel, 
and see the, they see the content that they expect to see. And then, uh, of course, respond to questions. It's better to wait and respond to the questions at the end because that might engage the audience a little more waiting for their questions to be answered. They'll sit through your whole presentation. And always a good idea to rehearse your presentation in advance. Not too many ums and ahs, right? Keep it, keep it moving. What equipment do you need beyond the encoder uh, for AV sort of stuff? Well, you probably want a camera. Again, you don't need to break the bank. You could use a webcam where you can use a $100,000 camera. Um, we like uh, the medium sized cameras, maybe a couple of thousand dollars. You could certainly get a $10,000 camera. Um, the choice is yours. And again, our systems integrators can help you uh, pick out a nice camera, tripod, microphone, lighting system, and, 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 and so on. And if you have multiple speakers, you probably want to have a microphone mixer, multiple uh, microphones for the speakers. Audio is very important for a quality presentation. So I showed you a little bit about Streamzy. Really easy to use. Runs right on your laptop, on your computer. It also is available for your iPhone and your iPad. So if you want to do live streaming directly from your cell phone, it's terrific. It's free. You can download it right now from the iTunes store. Just look for Streamzy. And then um, stream live, record. It even records in compressed format. So unlike your native camera with these monster files, you're going to have manageable, high-quality video uh, recordings, which you can instantly upload uh, directly from within the app. Really easy to use. What about uh, capture devices? How the heck do I get VGA, DVI, SDI, component, composite, HDMI? How do I get all this video into my computer? Well, you can buy a uh, what we call a spirit computer. I'll show you that in a moment. Or you can use a laptop, which we can also provide all already integrated and ready to go, and uh, plug in a Captiva device, which gives you whatever interface you want directly in via USB. So very portable, very simple, very, very, very powerful. And I mentioned the Spirit and Rover. So these are assembled encoders with multiple video inputs with the Streamsy already pre-installed, tested, ready to go, and uh, you can just start streaming right away. That brings us to distribution. How the heck do I get the video from an encoder, from the camera, you know, from the, from the glass of the camera lens out to my viewers? Well, <coughs> you do the encoding, but then you have to do distribution. Now, if you're going to do live streaming, you know, if uh, you're, and you have a 12-year-old kid, you know, he or she is going to say, Mom, Dad, don't spend any money. I can stream live on Facebook or, or YouTube. I know how to do that. Well, yeah. You know, good luck with that. It's certainly true, but those are consumer, uh, you know, cons consumer streaming. It's cool, it's nice, but you can't measure it, you can't control it, you can't put a password on it. It's not going to be secure. It's intended for the, you know, for the consumer to view. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, you have enterprise class uh, systems such as we sell, such as the as the Devo system scales to an enormous number of simultaneous viewers so you can scale this up however you like and you're not going to inflict a denial of service attack on yourself more on that in just a moment let's take a look at a typical system so here's a typical system and it starts with an encoder the encoder is a streamsy or a mantis or a, uh, a multi-channel encoder or a rover or a spirit or a third-party encoder that's sending the video stream via IP directly to the Devo server, to the distribution server. The distribution server, the Devo, certainly has streaming server built into it, but it's a portal. It's so much more. And then that content is then delivered off to players, whether it's on the desktop, mobile, Roku, even uh, Samsung smart TVs with no player. Just plug them in and they'll play your content as well. So that's the basic idea of a premise. And why would you put it on the premise as opposed to in the cloud? Well, you know, Devo uh, works both ways. We can install this on your server. We sell iron. We actually sell servers already pre-configured and ready to go. Very, very popular option. And increasingly, people like to run these sort of systems on the cloud. But we need to think about that a little bit. Using a cloud service is great if you're trying to reach consumers or people independently in their own homes, right? 
So let's suppose we're streaming at one megabit and you have a thousand people in your building. Well, if a thousand people in your building each view a one megabit stream, that's a gigabit of internet access they would need to get it from the internet to their desktops. It seems pretty inefficient and you probably don't have a full gig of internet streaming capacity or internet access capacity. So you would want to use the cloud with caution, but we have a solution even for the cloud system and that's Stream Pump. So if you have Debos on the premise or Debos on the cloud, you can put a Stream Pump on every branch office or in your headquarters location and that's going to replicate your traffic as well as automatically schedule during off-peak times when to uh, uh, cache your video on demand content so that it's possible for thousands of people to view your video uh, either from the cloud or from the branch office without bandwidth worry. So a terrific capability. But just amplify that a little bit. So it's a real problem in streaming, live streaming in particular. If I have 100 people or 1,000 people view a live stream, each one of them is going to consume bandwidth. And you're not going to get multicast video from the public internet. So you can easily inflict a denial of service on your attack if you're not careful. Stream pump, you can just scatter these stream pumps around. They're relatively inexpensive and they're available as small, medium, or large. And you can liberally sprinkle these around not only at branch offices, but at various points within your own private network. And when somebody views a video, unbeknownst to them, that video is actually coming from the local stream pump. The video on demand is also coming from the local stream pump because it will be automatically cached there, thereby eliminating most of the bandwidth traffic on the backbone network. So this makes a uh, distribution system extremely scalable. So let's talk about a few case studies and a, a challenge that uh, some of our customers have. So here's a medical services company. They're headquartered in New England and they have remote offices in 33 different st states and each remote office is tied to headquarters via a T1. You know what a T1 is? One and a half megabits, 1.536 megabits of data traffic you know, capable. But those T1s are there for mission critical data. In fact, Large uh, retail chains do the same sort of thing, not because they uh, don't need the bandwidth, but because they're doing millions of dollars of credit card transactions. And those connections, those private connections between branch offices and headquarters are absolutely vital to them. So how do you get video, live video, out to multiple viewers at 550 franchise locations worldwide, throughout the U.S. in particular? And how do you do those uh, live town hall meetings without using too much bandwidth and how do you record video and distribute it out to those remote locations? Well, the answer is Stream Pump. So they have a DeVos at their headquarters all inside the firewall, not even touching the public internet. They have Stream Pumps out at the branch office and at 2 o'clock in the morning or whatever time they schedule when the traffic on the network is at its lightest, the Stream Pump will automatically get the video on demand content of the day, cache it at the remote location. Somebody views it at the remote location, they're not consuming bandwidth you know, over the corporate backbone network and the mission critical is, uh, traffic is unaffected. Terrific application, terrific use. So some of the benefits, well, again, the company can use its existing wide area network infrastructure without having to add bandwidth to it. You know, there's two rules that run my life, right? One is the Maverick household budget rule, which says that doesn't matter how much money you make, debts will rise to meet available income, right? Isn't that true? And, and the second rule is the bandwidth rule. Doesn't matter how much bandwidth you have, applications will grow to fill available bandwidth. So yeah, you can always throw more bandwidth at it, but at some point, you know, you have quality service issues. So just a terrific way of, of caching the content at remote locations. So the benefit is the live video is seen everywhere. The video on demand is seen everywhere without breaking the bank. Company, uh, company employees receive the latest news and information and they're truly engaged as we talked about earlier in the uh, presentation. In uh, many cases, people like to use the multi-viewer. We've shown you the multi-viewer already. And remember, there could be multiple viewers, not just a dual viewer. So you can have... Um, uh, multiple views both live and on demand and when you record it it records in synchronization and then you can play it back and um, uh, 
people can adjust the video how they choose, not just how the author chose to make it. So let's talk about the town hall benefits. So the features, live distribution everywhere, relatively inexpensively. The system is very good network citizenship. It's not gonna break the network, right? Particularly when you deploy the stream pumps and plan how this network is going to uh, get rolled out. The StreamZ gives you great production value and our partners can, can add to that with additional accessories, cameras, and so on and so forth. Pretty simple one-click operation. You don't need to be a video producer or an IT specialist in order to do this. In fact, one of the benefits is your IT staff doesn't really have much of a workload, right? In most cases, the IT staff authorizes this, participates in the install and the rollout, but then it's hands off the operators, the, the, the executives, the media specialists, the people with a need all manage this and run their own content and um, uh, the IT doesn't really get involved. Of course, the system also supports optional internet streaming. So it's great to be able to have an enterprise system inside or VPN to remote offices, right? So those employees can access, but you can also use the same system and stream both live and on-demand content as well as digital signage on the public internet, which is great for sales and marketing and for uh, remote employees. Some of the benefits is this is good, good quality content. It's quite a, kind of enjoyable to watch. You'll be the judge whether this was enjoyable and you can display it virtually anywhere and reach thousands of employees um, with minimal cost and minimal effort with or without even deploying multicast. You know, multicast, as much as I love multicast, you know, there's some challenges in troubleshooting it, and uh, it's not the greatest solution for, uh, for Wi-Fi networks. So uh, being able to have a, a hybrid unicast multicast model is, is certainly the way to go. So that's it. Um, let me ask my partner, Mike, if there are any questions. Have any questions come in? Yes, we have. Okay. <laughs> First question is, uh, how would you compare the cloud-based system to the on-premise system from a cost standpoint? How would you compare the cloud-based system and the premise system from a cost point of view? Well, let's start with one is obviously OpEx, and one is obviously CapEx. We have customers that have chosen one not out of a technical reason, but because they only had an OpEx budget or they only had a CapEx budget. So, so, so that's a perfectly legitimate uh, uh, decision point. From a cost point of view, when you buy a system for your premise, it's yours, you own it. Now, we will charge you some ongoing maintenance fees for it if you elect to, uh, to uh, uh, obtain the software maintenance. We wanna keep it updated for you. Um, but I'll tell you that our maintenance charges are less than what everybody else in the industry currently charges. In many cases, you could buy a Discover video system for less than what you're paying on maintenance for the first generation system currently. So um, the, the cloud system, of course, you think of as a monthly service. So that's an ongoing service. The break-even cost difference between the two, assuming sort of an apples-to-apples -apples use comparison, usually is on the order of three years, right? So if you're going to use the system for three years, you're probably better off buying Right, if you use the cloud system, right, you could have uh, uh, paid for itself by buying the system uh, to begin with. On the other hand, in both cases, assuming you have uh, maintenance capability, both systems are going to automatically be updated to the current versions because that's what the software maintenance does. So you're, um, you're you're pretty assured to keep current with the current technology. So, so I guess the answer is it's it's kind of up to you. Uh, which way to go. Is that helpful? Yes. Cool. All right, another question. Uh, uh, in terms of um, if you had multiple speakers from different locations, could you have a speaker in San Francisco and another speaker in Chicago? Great, great question. So the question is, could I have multiple speakers? Let, let's suppose I'm going to do a presentation and my CFO is in California and my CTO is in... Um, Connecticut, and my uh, my CEO is in uh, Montana. That's where CEOs like to go, right? They're in Montana. He's, he's on a horse. Of course, he's got his streamsy. So as long as he got a cellular service, he can still participate. 
um, being a little bit facetious, but actually not that much. So there's a couple of answers. One thing you could do, and I didn't show you in Streamsy, Streamsy will capture a window on your desktop and record and stream it as your second video input. So to the extent that I have a Skype window or anything else open on my desktop, I can include that in my in my production. So that's one way to do it. Just choose the uh, the area that you want to stream, and um, uh, the other participants can 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 uh, can can do it that way. Um, the other answer is each party can be part of a quad view. Let's say in my example, CEO. CTO, CFO, all the C-level executives, maybe you got four of them, they can all stream simultaneously and the viewer can just choose which one they want to see. And as long as the CEO is quiet when the CFO is talking, right, you're going to have a, a good experience. So that's another way to do it. But there, there, there's multiple ways of, of achieving that result. All right, one last question yeah. we have. How complex is the system to use? Do you need an IT staff to help you run the system? So how complex is the system to use? So the system is, dis so I think like so many things, um, it's very, very easy for the user. So I think we have to break the question and just how easy is it to use from, a, from the point of view of the employee. I want to go view a video, right? I just want to view a video. Very easy. All the content you can organize into what we call channels, which are collections of content. So maybe I have a channel called Human Resources. And in Human Resources, I have the sexual har harassment prevention training video and the safety video. And, and then there's another link there, another video, which is the uh, benefits package video with associated documents, because you'd associate documents with all this. And very importantly, Maybe on the sexual harassment prevention training or, or some of the other training, there's embedded questions within the video. And as the video plays, I have to answer these questions. I can actually verify that somebody has actually viewed the video. Not that they clicked on it and went to get a, went to get a cup of coffee, but they actually viewed it because they were able to answer these questions. So from a viewing perspective, really easy. Click and, and you're done and you don't have to worry about installing any plugins or any of that sort of nonsense. From an administrative point of view, it's a little bit more complex because you're doing more, right? It's the, it's the question about how, what's the difference between watching a YouTube video or uploading a YouTube video. You would agree uploading a YouTube video is more complex, but not that much more complex, right? So it's sort of like that. It's pretty easy. Click, upload, do your live streaming. A lot of wizards built into the system. Of course, there's a, a lot of capabilities, so you can get to more complex things if you wish to. But for the basics, pretty easy. And um, you don't need a, a college degree. And we have online tutorials, manuals, hundreds of white papers, lots of way to help you, and a first-class support team to help you out if you have any questions. So that's it. If those are all the questions, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for tuning in today. Uh, why don't we bring up our, our slide mic uh, next to me here. There you go. So if you have any questions, you can uh, send an email to uh, sales at discovervideo.com. You can also send it to info. You can call us at that, uh, at that telephone number or visit the website, www.discovervideo.com. Thank you so much, and we will talk to you again next time. Bye for now.